Hello, and welcome to a recorded State Procurement Office webinar. Today's webinar is on reporting and posting awards. This is STO Workshop 141. Let's start with talking about who this workshop is for and what it's intended to do. This workshop is designed only for state and county personnel who are responsible for posting the award information or are responsible for conducting the procurement and are responsible for ensuring that the award information gets posted, or if you are a contract administrator and must ensure that your um, amendments get um, posted to the awards site as well. Lastly, this workshop is for department and jurisdiction account managers for PANS. This workshop is going to demonstrate the mechanics of posting an award. We'll also spend some time reviewing responsibilities for procurement personnel who are responsible for ensuring that the information gets posted, and also indicate some common mistakes that people make when posting awards. This workshop will not teach you everything you need to know about procurement or award procedure. There just isn't enough time. That's why we have the other workshops um, be sure you take the appropriate workshop for the method of procurement. What are we going to cover today? The items that must be reported, the time in which you have to report them, that is the timeline, our responsibilities and how we work together. For instance, if, you are, if someone else is conducting the procurement but you're responsible for posting the award, how soon the procurement person should get the information to you. Then we'll review both the posting site and the public site because they're two different sites. And lastly, we'll go over a few tools that we have available for you. Before you procure or administer a contract, you must have written delegated authority and training. This is particularly true if you are the person conducting the procurement. If your only job is to post the procurement, then you do not need to have uh, written delegated authority. At any rate, you'll see information on the SPO website <clears throat> um, on both delegation and also on training. If you, as I said earlier, if you only post awards and never participate in procurement in any other way, your only responsibility is to take SPO 140 or SPO 141 within six months of being designated as the PANS user. So let's start from the beginning. Why do we need to report or post this stuff? Well, we have a responsibility for open and transparent procurement process. And that means posting things in a place that's easily accessible as, um, as it could possibly be. These days, that's the web. And that's why we do this. There's also another reason, and that's because of our protest process for goods and services. In HRS 103D-701, it states that the vendor must submit their protest within five working days after the posting of the award. So the awards website is where we post that award, and the vendor gets five days. In Health and Human Services, in HARs 3140, 3619, 3144, 602, 3145, 608, 3146, 602, and 3147, 601. These are the sections that require reporting of the wards in a manner prescribed by the administrator. And the administrator prescribes that you post them on the website. And then the very last reason why we post or report these awards is that it's just the right thing to do. This is taxpayer money that we're expending, and they have a right to know where it's going. So what are the different roles and responsibilities in reporting and posting awards? Well, first of all, there's the account manager. There is one for every department and every uh, CPO jurisdiction. The accounts manager manages all the accounts for the department. Then there's the user. The user is the person who posts the award or the amendments or the final um, uh, award amount or term information. 
Also involved are the procurement personnel. They generally will provide the information to the user about the award and then go into the public site to ensure that it's posted correctly. Lastly is the contract administrator. The contract administrator will usually provide information to the user about amendments and the final award amount or any change in term, and then also goes into the public site and checks to make sure it is posted correctly. So what are the responsibilities of the accounts manager? Well, the accounts manager serves as the point of contact with SPO. Users contact their department or CPO jurisdiction uh, accounts manager. They don't contact SPO for accounts. The, user, the accounts manager also delegates the user accounts and reports the users to SPO on form SPO 040. If you're going to be uh, a user on a post, someone who posts on the site, you may be given form SPO 040 to complete. Be sure you give it to your, e your accounts manager. Lastly, the accounts manager is responsible for oversight to ensure that account security is maintained. For example, making sure that users know they can't share the account with everybody. Um, lastly, um, account managers ensure that the information is posted correctly. Now, most of you are aware that our accounts managers, um, account being the account manager as uh, among their other duties as assigned. So they cannot check every single award. What they'll do is periodically go in to the website and spot check. Um, they will do it monthly if they have the time, usually quarterly, and they'll be looking for obvious problems. For example, um, if someone fails to complete the, we the correct fields or they see that something is a small purchase award and then it's over the small purchase limit amount, like for instance $300,000, or if the basis for exemption code is obviously wrong. Departmental PANS account managers are online on the SPL website in the four state and county personnel section uh, uh, and click on the tile department or CPO jurisdiction contact. Users have to have some knowledge of computers and the internet. You cannot expect to call your accounts manager or SPO and teach you how to move a mouse. So you need to have some knowledge of computers. Because we are doing these online, although it is an application, you need to have some knowledge of the internet. So you need to be able to navigate to the site and enter the data. It's also helpful if users have some knowledge of procurement. This is nice to have because it can serve as a check and a balance if something doesn't look right, but it is not essential. Because we have data entry forms that can be completed by the procurement officer or the personnel conducting the procurement or the contract administrator, and these can assist the um, people who have been delegated to actually do the posting and it also decreases the extent of um, procurement knowledge necessary. Lastly, it can also cut down on data entry uh, problems, particularly if it's transmitted via email. That way, the person posting only needs to copy and paste. Um, the SPO form 040 to be able to delegate the users has instructions with it and is available on the SPO website. Um, so what is your uh, responsibility if you're one of those posting people and you're not one of the others? So if you're an account user, your responsibility is to maintain security of your account. Now it is recommended that one account be assigned to each division or office. So you may be sharing the account with someone else. Um, so not every person should have their own account. And we'll talk about why that's not a great idea later. The second responsibility as an account user is to enter the data in a timely fashion because there are time limits on how soon uh, an award must be posted. And then thirdly, a good account user checks their work on the public site to make sure it looks right 
can look right when you're posting it, when you're putting the data in, but when it goes out on the public site, that's the true test where you get to know uh, whether you entered it correctly. So what are responsibilities of procurement personnel? Well, you need to know your internal procedures and who the person responsible for posting is. Um, then you need to submit the data for posting to the person who posts in a timely manner. Most data has to be posted within seven days. That means you don't wait till day six to send it to the person who posts. And there are a number of other reasons why you don't want to do that. Lastly, uh, also you must submit the information in a manner the person posting will understand. That's why we've created those forms. You don't have to use the data entry forms, but you do need to use something that the person posting will understand. Giving them a copy of the contract is not sufficient because some people who post aren't familiar with the whole procurement process. Lastly, the last thing that procurement personnel are responsible for is checking the information and ensuring that the award information is complete and correct, and noting the date that it was actually posted. Why? Because vendors have five working days after the first date it's posted to protest. So for procurement of goods, services, and construction, you want to get out there and make sure that the uh, notice of award was the award was posted in a timely manner. Otherwise, you're extending the amount of time a vendor may have to protest. So what are the responsibilities of contract administrators? Sometimes the procurement personnel will also be the contract administrator, but other times they're different. And what happens is one person does the procurement, another person is handed the contract to administer. If you're the contract administrator, you must know your internal procedures and who the resp person responsible for posting is, just like the procurement personnel. Also, you want to submit the data for posting to the person who does the post in a timely manner. Again, with amendments, most data must be posted within seven days. La uh, thirdly, you want to submit the information to the person posting in a manner that they'll understand. For that reason, we also have a data entry form for amendments. Remember that the post person posting may not know your contract or procurement, um, and we recommend using the appropriate data entry form and emailing it to the person so they can just copy and paste and cut down on data entry problems. Once posted, contract administrators should note the date that it was actually posted and check that the award information is complete and correct. So what information needs to be posted? Well, all awards for uh, the method of procurement or exemption or amendment or contract end must be reported for the following. All competitive sealed bids, all competitive sealed proposals, any small purchase request for quote where the award is $2,500 or above, any sole source or emergency where the award is $2,500 and above, any exemption from Chapter 103D where the award is $2,500 and above. When it's an amendment, a supplemental agreement, a change order, or an extension, it must be posted when the change is affecting either the funding amount or the length of the contract. Lastly, a final contract amount and term, that is, if it's been extended must be posted. The dollar threshold, um, keep in mind that the dollar threshold for posting small purchase requests for quotes has changed. So let me go over that again quickly. For competitive sealed bids, nothing to worry about. Every award, every amendment, um, where the amendment affects the funding amount or the length of the contract has to be posted. The same thing for competitive sealed proposals. For small purchases, request for quote, sole source, emergency, and exemptions, any time the award is $2,500 and above, it must be posted on the award site. Also, any amendments, change orders, supplemental agreements, extensions, renewals, whatever you call them, when that change affects the total funding amount or the length of contract, they must be posted. 
Lastly, when it's a contract for usually services or something that occurs over a period of time, the final contract amount and the total term of the contract must be posted for all awards. So what about uh, award information to be posted when it's a professional services award? Well, when it's a professional services award, there's a whole different site for that because there is a statutorily required information that must be posted. All awards of $5,000 and greater procured pursuant to HRS Chapter 103D-304 professional services have to be posted. When do they have to be posted? Again, within that seven days. The data will remain on the website usually for 36 months. Sometimes it's a little bit longer. We don't do it exactly at 36 months. Once a year, we will purge the data that is older than 36 months. It will automatically be removed. You do not want to delete it. You want to leave it there. Um, what gets posted in professional service awards? A little bit more than what we put in, account, uh, in other types of awards. Uh, the names of the applicant submitted to the head of the purchasing agency, the awardee name, the contract dollar amount, names of the heads of the purchasing agencies or the designee making the selection, any relationship of the principals to the official making the award, and names of review and selection committee members. Remember, these things are required. <clears throat> um, the name and review, uh, the name of the review and selection committee members are required for the executive branch by the CPO. What about health and human services? What needs to be posted for that? Well, it's really simple. All awards, all methods of procurement must be posted. All uh, modifications and final contract term and amount must be posted. What are the timelines for good services and construction? Well, for all of the methods of procurement, the number of days that you have to post from the date that you are issuing notice of award is seven. For exemptions, it's the same thing, seven days. Same thing for amendments, seven days. The final amount and the final term of the contract for good services and construction, you have 60 days. And the reason that it's this long, though we don't recommend that you take that long, the reason it's this long is that sometimes um, awards are awarded pursuant to federal grants, and sometimes it takes a while before they know the final amount and the final uh, exact term. Timelines for reporting and posting for health and human services, same thing. Uh, similar to um, good services and construction for all methods of procurement, it's seven days. For exemptions and amendments, it's also seven days. The final amount in term is a little bit longer than it is for uh, good services and construction because there are a large number of federal grants under Health and Human Services, and usually the final amount takes a while uh, uh, to establish, and so it may be, it's a little bit longer, it's 90 days. If you do have the final amount sooner, we recommend that you post it as soon as possible. The longer you wait, the longer, the more likely you are to forget to post. <coughs> Just a reminder that amendments or change orders or supplemental agreements that involve changes in funding amount or term of the contract must be reported. At the end of the contract, the things that must be awarded must be reported are the final awarded amount and any changes in the contract term. Um, for those of you who used to post, um, there are these are some changes that have occurred. Um, note that the award date is the notice of award date, and it's mandatory. It's no longer states notice of award or PO date because some people for small purchases were waiting until the PO was cut, which was at the end of the contract. This is the awards user posting site. Um, this is where you'll go to post for all awards except for professional services uh, awards. Um, uh, it's the main SPO website. You click on manual for state and county 
uh, personnel, and then the procurement, and then PANTS. For professional services, is again, the main SPO website, click on Contract Awards, click on Contracts for Good Services in Construction, Professional Services, in the lower right-hand corner, you'll find the login. A little bit about the public site, where to direct vendors and the public. It's the same site that you just used to go to get to uh, the professional services. You're going to go to the main SPO website and tell uh, vendors to click on Contract Awards. For all awards except professional services, they can go in and they can search. Professional Services is in a separate database and it's searchable in the Professional Services. You can also search by department, division, and either contract number or keyword. For Professional Services Awards, you can select Professional Service Awards, select your department from the department list, and use the search box to find your award when you're checking the public sites. Some common mistakes. When people do supplemental agreements, they list them as separate contracts, but they're not. They're supplemental to the original contract. So they're a form of an amendment and should be entered as such. They are not to be listed as a new contract. When you're using the exempt method of procurement or sole source, make sure that the basis for the exemption or the sole source is correct and that it matches what's being purchased. Uh, one of the glaring problems, and there are a lot of people who look at our website, is they'll look at um, the method of procurement. They'll look at um, the fact that it's been issued as an exemption, and the exemption or the sole source listed um, says that it's um, for something like training and um, the sole source reason has nothing to do with that. It's something entirely different. Remember that the notice of award means just that. The date must be before the goods or services are delivered. It's not when the vendor is paid. So the notice of award is when the vendor is notified that they're, they've been awarded. Also remember that each payment to a single vendor is recorded as part of the award. So you may be paying by multiple purchase orders, but it doesn't mean that each PO is a new award and you list it as a separate record. If you're paying by multiple POs, enter a contract or put the first PO number in the contract um, number, and you can place the additional PO numbers if you want to put them in there in the comments field. Note that HIPRO awards are posted automatically on the HIPRO public site and there is a link from the public site uh, for the rest of the awards to High Pro Awards, which we'll be showing you shortly. Again, a reminder, supplemental agreements are not to be entered as separate contracts or awards. They're simply amendments to the existing award. A few tips on entering funding amount fields and amendments. In the original amount, if you're not sure of the total amount, enter an estimate of the total amount to be expended if the contract is not a fixed price contract. When the contract ends, enter the amount actually expended in the final expended amount field. If the amendment amount, when entering an amendment amount for an amendment, the amount of the change to the original award in the con um, is to what's to be entered in the amendment. Let me say that again. For uh, when entering an amendment amount, you're entering in the change in the total price, not the total price. So if an, amount, an amendment increases um, a contract by $28,000, you're entering in the 28000 that you're increasing the contract for, by in the amendment amount. At the end of the contract, you'll sum all the additional funds from all your amendments along with the original amount and list the final expenditure. Some do's and don'ts for awards reporting. Remember, entries that are not acceptable in the description field, don't put only the RFP or the IFB number. That doesn't tell the public anything. Don't put something that's so generic 
that people can't really tell what it is. For instance, consulting services. Say consulting services for and then list what they're consulting on. Don't leave the description field blank and don't write year two, and this is, we've seen this, a year two of maintenance agreement. This will is an automatic red flag to auditors who are going to be saying, well, where's year one and why wasn't it procured? Is this an improper procurement? So you want to make sure that all the information you post on the public site is solid because we don't want to um, have it um, audited. Some tips on entering data. Remember that you need to complete all fields. Remember to enter a brief but informative description in the description field. Remember that the goal here is to be open and transparent. Also, try not to use any parentheses, commas, semicolons, colons, etc., or acronyms in the description field. You want it to um, be clear. Um, sometimes parents interfere with the programming. We think that we've uh, edited that out, but if you run into a problem, take out the parens, the commas, or the semicolons. Remember also to review your entry on the public site to make sure that it posted correctly. Sometimes putting in a parenthesis or a comma will change what shows up on the public site. How do we allocate our accounts? Well, SPO recommends one account per division with a primary user and one or two persons serving as backup. The SPO doesn't know, need to know who the backups are. We just need the SPO 40 for the primary user and the division. When you log in, you will only be able to see or amend the awards that you've entered in that account name. If you have more than one account for that division, and one person leaves, that second person who has their own account cannot change anything in the first person's account number. They can only change um, their own uh, things that are uh, put in by the person who, by the account who enters it in the first place. So if the primary person goes on vacation and the secondary person has their own account and enters a new award, only the secondary person will be able to amend that award later on. When the primary person returns, the only way the primary person will know an award has been entered is to look at the public site. They won't be able to see it internally. Um, all the tools that you can use are on the SPO website, the guide for reporting, the quick reference, the data form, the FAQs, and the references are also on the SPO website. They're on every page in the menu bar. Watch for any updates to these quick references and uh, data reporting form. In summary, there are just two sections for each award site, Good Services and Construction and Health and Human Services. The user site um, where the users enter data is different than the public site where all awards entered properly are visible to everyone. Once you've logged in to the user site, each account that is login or password can only see what's been entered by that account. So if you have an account and somebody else has an account in your division, you cannot see uh, each other's entries or edit them. Lastly. User accounts are allocated by your department or jurisdiction accounts manager, not SPO. So what? What information has to be reported? All awards, amendments that change the funding amount or the term of the contract, and the final amount awarded and the final end date. Let's say you're awarding, you're buying a tractor, and you know how much you're going to pay for it. You can enter the final award amount at the time you create the award in PANS. You do not have to wait until um, it's finally paid off as long as you know that that's the amount that it will be paid. How often and when do you have to put um, awards and amendments, notices of amendments in uh, PANS? Well, for all notices of awards, seven days or sooner if you can. Remember, the seven days starts the countdown for vendors who, want to pro who may want to protest. 
for amendment. Again, the uh, date is seven days, and by days, we mean calendar days. The final amount and term of contract for good services and construction is 60 days and 90 days for health and human services. There are two different systems for posting awards, notices, and solicitations. Remember, the user ID for both systems will be the same, but the passwords may be different. It depends on what the choo user chooses to do. Users can change their passwords, um, and for each system, there's a different process for changing that password. Remember, use the guides for posting awards when you're posting. If you have any questions, check the Reporting Posting Awards FAQ. If you're not sure if something needs to be posted or not, check the quick reference. That's where it's going to tell you those things. OK. Let's go to the site. So here is the SPO website. Um, it's a little collapsed today. I'm not real sure why. And the first thing we'll do is go to the uh, site to report all awards. So I'm going to click on four state and county personnel in the menu bar at the top. And then I'm going to click on manual for state and county personnel. And then I'm going to go to procurement and then posting awards, notices, and solicitations. A quicker way to do that is to go, go from home, click on Manual for State and County Personnel, and that takes you directly to the same place. So there's two ways you can go. Procurement, and then posting awards, notices, and solicitations. Once you click on that, you'll see some more tiles. This is an overview of PANS. Here's where you go if you forget how to uh, attain, obtain an account. Here's the PANS help and support. This is where you'll find the quick references and the manual. What do you do if you forget your password? Where do you log in? If you still need help, here's where to go for the FAQs. Where to post and report. Here's where to post and report. Um, notice that this has two columns. This is the public site. This is where you're going to send vendors. This is where you can go. This is the posting site. All the things that you need to post will be here. So let's go to awards. Note that this is awards except for professional awards. We're going to go to the awards site. To log in, simply type in your username and your password. If you've used this site more than once, your username may come up. Click Submit, and you will be logged in. Now, this particular user has seen, has access to pretty much everything. Most of you will see only two items. You will see health and human services contracts, and you will see uh, if you have health and human services, you may also see RFPs for health and human services, and you'll also see contracts for good services and construction. Let's say I want to enter a uh, solicitation for contracts for good services and construction. I'm going to click on Manage. <clears throat> and I'm going to add a new contract. The first thing that will come up is the method of procurement. Click the drop down and select the method of procurement. Uh, you must know this. This has to be on the data entry form. So if you're giving it to someone to post, remember that they uh, that you need to provide them with this that information. I'm going to select Invitation for Bids. It happens to be the first one on the list, but I know that the thing I'm selecting is uh, for a competitive sealed bid. After you select the method of procurement, you'll have to select Save because that will determine the kinds of questions that you get. 
competitive field bids, the first thing it's going to ask me for is the contract or PO number. If you're posting this notice of award and you don't know the contract or PO number, you cannot post unless you put something in this field. If you leave this field blank, it will not appear on the public site. So what most people do is they'll put in the IFB number. Next, you're going to put in uh, your department will be spelled out for you. <clears throat> and um, you, uh, you will not need to select your department. It will be there for you. Once your department appears, and it should appear automatically, below that you'll be able to select all the divisions um, within that department. Next goes the description. This was a solicitation for um, IT services to include installation of new software and testing. After you've entered the description, you're going to enter the name of the contact for this, con this particular contract. You, next, you'll enter the phone number. the email. Next from the list, you will select the vendor who's been awarded. Now this list is in alphabetical order. Um, and if you tap the first letter of the vendor name, it will take you to all of it. It will automatically take you to the first of the P's. Unfortunately, it will not, it will not, um, uh, give you the second letter. So tap. Um, the awardee for me is Pace Applied Technology. If your vendor is in this list, there is nothing else you need to do. Do not click on Add New Vendor. If you scale the whole list and the vendor is not in the list, then you click on New Vendor. Click Add New Vendor. Type in the vendor's name, any abbreviation for that vendor, and type Save. I already found the vendor's name, so I'm not going to put it in again. The original award amount is $75,000. I'm not putting in any commas. This was a fixed price contract, so I don't have to worry about the end of the contract because I know it's not going to go above that. But if I don't know and it's possible it might change, then I won't put in the final amount. My notice of award date was uh, is uh, April 1st, 2014. The contract will be starting on April 15th, 2014. Notice the format that you have to put it in. The end date of the contract will be uh, a specific date. If I have any comments, I need to put them in there. If I don't have any comments, guess what? That's all you need to do. To view it, shows here that it's been added. Click on View Source, and here's the information. Notice that the date that this was created and the date it was updated is in the system. I did not enter that, and neither will you. There is no way to change this date, so it's important that you post these things 
in a timely manner. How do I do an update? <clears throat> That's pretty easy. I go back to the search. How do I look for my contract? I simply type in the contract number. And there it is. To amend, now it's hard to see. So let's make these buttons a little bit bigger. You'll see four buttons on the left. The first is to amend what you already have. For instance, if um, you need to amend the end date. The second is to uh, add an addenda. The third is if you want to upload an attachment. And the fourth is to delete the record. So let's go ahead and create an addendum. Here you'll see we've created our first amendment. Um, there are no amendments to this contract yet. I have to go all the way to the right to add a new amendment. And then what I have to do is select the type. Is this an amendment or is this an extension? And basically what that means is, am I extending the contract or is this for some other reason? I'm going to extend this contract. What is the date of my amendment? Well, that's the date that I notified the vendor that it's going to be extended. So I'm going to put in for um, 25, 2014. In the description, you're going to put the reason for amending the contract. So I'm putting in a reason. My contract is being extended for 30 additional days to complete the project. Ran a little bit behind schedule. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and make a point of saying in here that no additional funds were required. That will automatically let people know that it just ran a little bit over and that um, there are no, uh, there's no hanky-panky going on. I am going to put in here that there were zero extended amount. I don't have to add any funds. Then I'm going to click on Save. And I've added my amendment. If you want to see the IFB, Click on the IFB number, and you'll see the original amount and the amendments. Okay. Here's the extension. The updated amount is zero, not an additional amount. The contract is being extended for 30 additional days to complete the project. No additional funds were required. Okay, that's all there is for that. Let's go now to the professional services. I'm going to go to contract awards. I'm going to click on awards. This is the public site where you go and you check. And here you'll see the public site. So if I want to check on my awards for good services and construction, and I want to find the IFB that I just posted, I can click on Search, or I can click on IFB and then Search. To start with, I'm going to click on Search. I'm going to limit it to IFB so it will go faster, and then I'm going to put in my IFB number. And you'll see I've typed it before so it appears. Here's what the public sees in the site. <clears throat> to see the details, click on it. You see all the details that you saw by checking the source. Again, to the public, it shows the date it was created and the, and the date it was updated. Um, again, how do we do our professional services? Contracts for good services, and we go to the award site. We 
click on uh, contract awards, then we click on contracts for good services and construction. We go to professional services. And we go and get a cup of coffee because it takes a while for the professional services site to come up. This is uh, very long. Um, it is much faster now than it used to be. If you would like to review the public site, notice that in the public site, there is a way to search the awards. Um, you can search them by a state agency, uh, by category. These are the categories that are in there, or an award that was awarded after a date. If you want to look at more than 10 at a time, see where it says Show 10 Entries? There's a drop-down box next to it. Click on the drop-down box, and you can show up to 100 entries at a time. Another way to check for professional services awards is to use the search field. And for instance, if I want to look for Architect, Notice that it searches fairly fast and will search as you type. Every every field, every excuse me, every contract with uh, the word architect will come up, and you'll see that there are 887 of the 2,900 uh, awards here have the word architect in them. But we want to post our first professional award, so. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to the bottom of the page, and we're going to look with our sharpest eyes at the very bottom of the page where the um, copyright is. Right directly above the copyright, it will say Home, Term of Use, and Login. You're going to click on Login. And again, you're going to type in your username and password. After you do that, click on Continue to the State Procurement Office homepage. Click on the method of what you're trying to post. Most of you will have access to both notices and professional service awards. Notices are for notices of procurement. We're going to click on professional awards today. Click on it one more time. And then you'll see a page that looks very similar to the page you just came from, but it's not. It's got one little difference and that is this line right here. It will say, Go to Professional Services Awards menu. Click on that. Now you're able to add a new award. To add a new award, under Add New, click on Award. Once you have, you'll see that it will start. It will tell you who it's posted by. It gives your name, who the purchasing agency is. That's determined by who you are. The professional services category that you're selecting. These are the professional services categories and I'm selecting. Uh, we'll click on Architect and Engineering. The services to be provided are Design Services for a new ball field. The awardee is ABC uh, Design Incorporated. This is just a text field, so you're going to put in the name of the company, their legal name, the date that the contract was actually awarded, and you'll be able to put in date. And you want, again, want to post it within um, a, a f seven working days. The amount of the initial award.
if you're going to amend the award, you'll come back in and you'll select the award, and this is where you'll be able to come to amend it. If you want to add uh, any comments when you amend it, you'll put them in there. Um, but for now, you're going to put in the title, the name and the title of the official making the selection for this award. Remember that that should be the head of the purchasing agency or their designee. The relationship between the principles of the um, company you're awarding to and the official making the selection, the default is none, but of course if there is a relationship, it should be entered. The contact name for the award. Who should an interested person contact if they have any questions about the award? Their contact number, please put in the area code. And their email. Next, you need to put in the names submitted for the selection. And this goes out on the real side, so I'm going to put in test. And the names uh, that are submitted for selection must include, oh, excuse me, must include the three names of the vendors. We recommend that you put them in in um, alphabetical order. Who was on the review committee? And then ultimately, who made the selection? Remember the difference between the review committee and the selection committee? The review committee reviews all um, applications that were submitted and determines whether they can be entered on the list. And the selection committee is made up of the people who actually did the selection. Once you've entered that, you can scroll down. If you're amending the reason of the award, again, you can put in the date that the uh, award was amended. Um, the date it's amended, if you go back in later and amend it, will be entered at that time automatically. Notice that the posting date is automatically recorded. We can't go in and change it. Remember to be patient. It takes a minute for it to go. Watch the round circles. And here's your data. Please review your data before you leave the site. When you're done, you can simply log out of the site or simply close it. If you see any mistakes, click on Edit. Otherwise, click Close. This will take you back to the page before. If you realize that, if you see it in here and realize you made a mistake, simply go to the Professional Services Awards menu and instead of New, click on My Records. 
and then you can find your award and select it. If you, it will open it, if you need to edit it, click on edit. Putting in this is a test award in case somebody logs in and says, hey, how come I didn't have a chance to apply? Then after that, save your uh, changes and you're done. When you're done entering everything you need to enter, log out. Remember to use the guides for posting awards when you're posting. If you have any questions, check the Reporting and Posting Awards FAQ. That is, you go to our FAQs and go to PANS. If you're not sure if something needs to be posted um, or when it needs to be posted, then the quick reference is what you use. Where do you go to find those things? Here are the FAQs. Find the FAQs for awards and posting. Simply scroll down on the left and select awards and posting, and that's where you'll find all the FAQs. If you want to find the um, training references, the, the uh, manuals, go to four state and county personnel or go to home and select training for state and county personnel. Select Training References and Materials. Um, under General, scroll down till you see SPO 141, and you'll see all the training manuals and the forms for reporting and posting awards. Thank you very much for attending today's uh, webinar. Feel free to come back to the webinar at any time and watch any portion of it. Again, thank you for attending. If you have any questions, call SPO at 5860554. Thanks and have a great day.